On March 3, 1970, Nihon Victor, known more commonly as JVC, entered into a joint broadcasting venture to create home and TV content. This venture eventually acquired a name, Packin Video, that originally started publishing and distributing videos, but found more success as a video game developer and publisher for titles on Sony's MSX and Nintendo's Famicom. Packin Video mainly focused on creating games in the Japanese market, and some examples include Rambo in 1985 and Knight Rider in 1988. But only a couple titles were ever published abroad. One of those internationally published titles is the reason most of us are here today. I don't mean like physically, a video game can't produce humans. I mean why you're watching this video and why I'm making it. On August 9th, 1996, Bokujo Monogatari, the farm story as it was known in Japan, was released for the Super Famicom. It was awesome and great and amazing, and it was so amazing that it got picked up by international publishers and spawned its own video game franchise that sold a bunch of copies, a bajillion million copies. It became what you and I know today as Harvest Moon. But I'm going too fast. To really understand the history of Harvest Moon, we have to look at the mind behind the game first. Yasuhiro Wada. Our pal Yasuhiro was a good old country boy who moved to the big city to make video games. Now my pronunciation for this next part may not be too great, but Yasuhiro was first listed on a title called Hiho Densetsu Chris Noboken, a side-scroller action game developed by Arc System Works for the Turbo Graphics CD in 1990. He got his first shot at game design on Atlas for the Super Nintendo in 1995, and then helped produce his first game, Metal Angel 2, that same year. After cutting his teeth with those titles, Amcus, a video game development company, gave Yasuhiro creative control to make his own video game. This game would be inspired by the simple pleasures he experienced in the Japanese countryside. No combat, no mini bosses, just good old fashioned farm work. Thus, Bokujo Monogatari was born. Unfortunately for Yasuhiro, Pack and Video, the publisher of Bokujo Monogatari, went bankrupt during the development of the game. This resulted in a merger with another JVC subsidiary company called Victor Entertainment, and together they created Victor Interactive Software. The upheaval in ownership slashed Yasuhiro's budget and downsized his development team from 10 to 3 people. Nonetheless, Bokujo Monogatari was completed, released, and did well enough to warrant publishing in North America and Europe. Enter Natsume. Natsume Company Limited was established as a video game development and publishing company in Japan in 1987. A year later, they created an American division, Natsume Incorporated, that spun off to become independent of their Japanese parents in 1995. In 1997, two years later, Natsume Incorporated entered into an agreement with Victor Interactive Software to publish Bokujo Monogatari in North America. Natsume would handle what we call localizing Bokujo Monogatari to better market the game to a Western audience. This localization service included an objectively poor translation from Japanese to English, replacing any references to alcohol, and arguably the most important change was a new title, Harvest Moon. These two companies coexisted and collaborated very well for a good long time. Under the name Victor Interactive Software, they created and published six Harvest Moon games, including Harvest Moon 64, Back to Nature, and Save the Homeland. Eventually, Victor Interactive Software was acquired by Marvelous Entertainment Incorporated in 2003, creating a whole new subsidiary, Marvelous Interactive, that owned all of Victor Interactive Software's assets and intellectual property including the rights to Bokujo Monogatari. That being said, this acquisition and change in ownership had no real effect on the corporate relationship between these two entities. Marvelous Interactive and Natsume dropped 16 additional Harvest Moon games, including certified bangers, Friends of Mineral Town, A Wonderful Life, Magical Melody, and Animal Parade. However, the tides began to shift in 2005. 
Marvelous Interactive acquired an American company called AQ Interactive. In 2007, AQ Interactive acquired Exceed Games, which would serve as the localization and publishing services for AQ Interactive. In 2008, Marvelous leveraged the power of these subsidiaries and entered into a co-publishing agreement with Exceed Games in North America. And finally, the Marvelous corporate acquisitions and name change merry-go-round ends in 2011, when Marvelous Interactive merges with AQ Interactive, creating Marvelous AQL, which would later be named Marvelous Inc. in 2014. Now, let's rewind to 2012, which will become a notorious year for the Harvest Moon series. Even though Marvelous had exceed localizing and publishing games in North America since their acquisition in 2008, the Harvest Moon franchise remained off-limits. But the writing was on the walls for Natsume. Through all these mergers, acquisitions, and publishing agreements, Marvelous now had an in-house localization and publishing company in North America. Natsume was made redundant, but they had an ace in the hole, the name. Natsume owned the trademark Harvest Moon. Everything that the brand has built and means to so many people in North America belongs to the publisher, not the developer. If Marvelous ever wanted to sell the Bogujo Monogatari franchise in North America using a publisher that wasn't Natsume, they would have to pick a new name, build a new brand, and essentially start all over again. March 31st, 2015 is where one road splits into two. Marvelous was confident in their ability to establish a new brand with the Bokujo Monogatari games, discontinued their licensing agreement with Natsume, and utilized Exceed to publish and localize their new brand, Story of Seasons. Natsume saw this play and said, okay, bet, and teamed up with a video game development company called Apsi Corporation, formerly known as Tabit Incorporated, to continue pumping out Harvest Moon games, beginning with Harvest Moon The Lost Valley, released on November 4th, 2014. And that's where we are today. Natsume has developed and published seven Harvest Moon titles, while Marvelous and Xseed have also dropped seven Story of Seasons games. You can see how going blow for blow, game for game like this for almost nine years has created a lot of confusion amongst the uninformed and a lot of resentment towards Natsume from lifelong Harvest Moon fans. Now, I won't speak for everyone, but a lot of Harvest Moon fans see Natsume's treatment of the brand as a heinous, bastardization of a genre-defining franchise, and are rightly so, in my opinion, openly critical of any Harvest Moon game Natsume releases. Their newest title, Winds of Anthos, has received some favorable ratings on Steam, IGN, and other outlets, but can it save the franchise? Can one title change the discourse surrounding Natsume and their treatment of the Harvest Moon brand? Only time can tell. Thanks so much for watching my video. It's always fun to do a video essay style project occasionally, and this also serves as my version of the explaining the split between Harvest Moon and Story of Seasons video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button and leave a comment so I can farm that sweet, sweet engagement for the YouTube algorithm. Also, around 90% of people who watch my videos are unsubscribed, so it would really help me out if you subscribed and enabled notifications. If you want to go the extra mile and get involved in my community, follow me on Twitter, Twitch, and join my Discord. Those links are in the description below. If you guys can get this video to 1,000 likes, I'll drop my own personal review of the new Harvest Moon game, Winds of Anthos. Thanks again, and I hope to see you in my next video.